Okay, so welcome back. This is part seven in our series where we help you to understand this device here, which is a switching power supply. And this particular device is a Dell uh, ATX power supply, which means it follows the ATX specification. And in previous videos, we've looked at various parts of this. In this video, we're going to focus on this integrated circuit right here, which is a power factor correction and pulse width modulation controller. And its primary function is to generate a PWM signal that drives this switching transformer. And this transformer generates the 12 volts and the 5 volts and the 3 volts that go to our computer, uh, our GPU, our motherboard, and all the components of a computer. Um, as we mentioned before, the features in this uh, switching power supply, the different elements are very, very common in other types of devices, your phone, your GPU, other types of devices use power supplies. And we talk about buck converters, we talk about um, pulse width modulation. So I encourage you to look at the other videos so you get a good idea about these basic concepts and you will be able to use them in many different places. So in this video, we're going to look at this PWM controller. In previous videos, we looked at a very simplified SPICE model, a simulator to simulate a very simple power supply. Um, in this, we're going to focus more on this actual integrated circuit and see how it actually works in the real world and some of the limitations and design considerations we need to consider. So here is our LT SPICE model with the simplified switching power supply we've been using in the previous videos in the series. And I encourage you to take a look at those previous videos. We talk a lot about what all this is, how it works. Uh, we even look at the power company feeding your 120 volts into your wall outlet. What do they have on their side and what are the requirements for power factor correction and over voltage protection and all that kind of stuff. So I encourage you to look at those. Um, here we've got the simplified model and it basically takes from the wall outlet, a full wave rectified voltage. And this V in is about 170 volts DC with some ripple. And that goes into our buck converter that ultimately delivers 12 volts out of our power supply to a load that we have modeled here. And uh, we talked in previous videos how this works and how we get these values. Um, this is being driven by this MOSFET. You can see right here. And the MOSFET is being driven by this PWM controller integrated circuit. And we talked in the previous videos about how this works. Very simple device. It takes the feedback of the actual voltage coming out of our power supply and uses that as information for this integrated circuit to tell it how much they need to change the duty cycle of the PWM signal in this MOSFET to make the voltage stay at the 12 volts that we want. So again, I encourage you to look at those previous videos where we talk a lot about this. In this video, we're going to focus on this PWM controller integrated circuit. Now, we use this Linear Technologies LTC3873 model for a couple reasons. One, because it's very simple. Uh, you can see it's got an output, which is the PWM signal going to the MOSFET, an input, which is the feedback, which measures the actual output, and adjust that duty cycle of that PWM to make the output stay around 12 volts. Then we've got our VCC, our supply, and we have this run soft start that we hooked up a very simple circuit to measure the actual current coming out of our power supply. And if it gets above the rating, it will um, use this voltage to apply to a simple SR flip-flop. And if the current is too high, it operates this flip-flop and shorts this run terminal on the integrated circuit, which instantly shuts down this um, power supply to protect your whatever your power supply is feeding, like a motherboard or whatever. So um, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look a little bit closer at this integrated circuit. In our actual power supply we have on our bench, our Dell ATX power supply, we have a similar device, but it's a little bit more functional. And the device we have in the power supply is this integrated circuit right here. And you can see it's got 16 pins instead of eight, as the Linear Technologies has, which implies there's more functionality in this. This is a Champion Micro 6800 integrated circuit. 
So this not only provides a PWM controller, but it also provides power factor correction. We talked in, I think, video number four in this series, what that means. So I encourage you to take a look at that. So this is more functional. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look a little bit more at the actual uh, integrated circuit, the PWM controller, and measure some of the voltages on this using our scope. Uh, for example, we're going to look at the PWM signal coming out of this as we adjust the load on our power supply to see if it responds the way we thought in our simulation. So here is the data sheet for the device we used in our LT SPICE simulation, the LTC3873 by linear, or analog devices or linear technologies. Um, and if you scroll through here, uh, the first thing they have is a typical application. And if you look, you can see it's kind of sort of the same as what we have in our LT SPICE simulation. You got a uh, switching transformer with a capacitor on the output. Um, you have our switching MOSFET, and the end gate is connected to the gate of that to switch that. And then we've got this feedback like we had before with some little bit different values, but basically taking the actual output and bringing it into this feedback circuit so the integrated can, circuit can decide what duty cycle you need to switch this in order to get the correct voltage. And then you've got the run SS. Um, so you can see it's kind of similar to what we have in our simplified model, but a little bit different. Now we're going to look at the data sheet for the actual device. And this is a Champion Low Startup Current PFC PWM controller combo. So it does not only pulse wave modulation, but also power factor correction, CM6800. So if you look through here, um, you can see some interesting information about this. It's got an overvoltage comparator to shuts down PFC. The PWM section can be operated in current or voltage mode at up to 250 kilohertz, which means you can adjust the PWM signal itself. And it also includes an accurate 50% duty cycle limit to prevent transformer saturation. So what we're going to see, and we kind of saw it in the previous videos, is that you're not going to get a PWM signal out of this that exceeds 50%. And the reason is because of possible switching transformer saturation. Now, I did a series previously on understanding transformers, and we talked about saturation. I encourage you to look at that. But you can see we're starting to get up against some practical limits that are going to have to affect the design of our switching power supply. And this is a great opportunity to see this in action. So there's a bunch of information in here. You've got the, the 16 pins of this as opposed to eight. And if you look through, you can see, ah, VFB, that's probably the feedback like we had on the other device. VCC, we had that on the other device. PWM out, that's probably the same as the end gate. Uh, ground, um, so you can see there, and there's also soft start. So a lot of this matches, but there's some additional functionality for power factor correction. We're starting to feel kind of comfortable with this device, uh, realizing that there's some additional functionality. And this explains each pin, what it does, and what the limits are. So now another feature we added in our circuit, our simplified um, power supply circuit, is up here. In the previous video, we added this simple overcurrent sensor, which is a very low resistance um, resistor that will have a voltage across it proportional to how much current is flowing. So if I've got a 0.001 ohm resistor in 6 amps, I will have 0.006 volts, right? So we use that to sense how much current is flowing out of our power supply. And we built this very simple circuit to control our um, PWM controller and automatically shut down when that voltage gets too high, which, which means that the current is getting above the rated value. And to do that, we had a simple um, behavioral voltage source that had an equation that just uh, determined what was the voltage across that resistor. If it was too much, then shut this down. And to do so, we used a very, very simple SR flip-flop. And basically, if, it gets, if the voltage gets too high, which means the current's too high, you get a one here, which hits this set input, which triggers this 
Q output to one, which closes the switch, shorts this terminal on the um, PWM controller, and shuts everything down immediately. So um, you might think that maybe um, if this was a very functional PWM controller in our real power supply, it might have something similar. Well, it turns out, surprisingly or not surprisingly, it has a built-in function to do that. And it's called the PWM current limit. And there is a pin, DCI limit pin, is a direct input to the cycle by cycle current limiter for the PWM section. Should the input voltage at this pin ever exceed one volt, which coincidentally is what we're using, the output flip-flop, so it does use a flip-flop internally, is reset by the clock pulse at the start of the next PWM power cycle. So um, as it says, um, the DCI limit input is used for output stage over current protection. So um, if we look back at the internal diagram of this, we can see that here is the DCI limit in pin 9, and it comes in here, it's compared against 1 volt, and if it exceeds 1 volt, it does this SR flip-flop exactly as we had. So, you know, this is good indication that you can, you know, use these general concepts, and they probably apply in whatever specific uh, PWM controller you're going to be using. And we can look here at the pin configuration and... Uh, here on the right, so we've got the VCC that we're using, the PWM out, the ground, and here's the DCI limit that will um, measure the power supply output current and um, shut it down. So in our ATX power supply, there is also a separate supervisor circuit, which we may talk about in the future. And we also saw how that worked on the bench in a previous video where we applied a short circuit and these circuits work to shut the power supply down with a short circuit. So what we're going to do first, we're going to go to the bench and start by measuring some of the voltages around this um, PWM controller. For example, we'll look at the PWM out versus ground um, to see if it matches our simulation. And maybe we'll see that there is a 50% duty cycle limit as we adjust the load current. Now again, do not do this at home. Do not measure these voltages on your bench, you can get hurt or killed. Okay, so here we are on the bench. We've got our Dell ATX power supply. And what we're going to do is we are going to look further at this device right here, which we've been talking about, which is our CM6800 um, PWM and PFC controller. And this basically adjusts the PWM duty cycle to switch this switching transformer which has the output 12 volts going to our motherboard or whatever. First thing I want to do is I want to measure the PWM signal as I adjust the load. Now, as I said before, do not do this at home. There's some very high voltages here. It can hurt you, it can kill you, and it can also damage your bench equipment. Um, here I'm using for my scope, we're going to measure the PWM signal. We're going to look at it on the scope. I'm using a differential probe so that I don't accidentally short circuit to ground some of these high voltages. Again, do not do this at home. This is for education only. So um, we're going to take a look at the PWM out of this as we adjust the load on the power supply. So how am I going to adjust the load on the power supply? Well, I'm going to take one of the six pin connectors coming out of the power supply. And this is what might go to your GPU, which uses a lot of current. And I'm going to take the 12 volts, you can see these yellow wires, I'm going to connect this 12 volts to a variable resistor, a rheostat. And I did a video on what is a rheostat, but basically this is going to be 0 to 20 ohms, I think. And we're going to vary that across this 12 volt um, rail and see what happens to the PWM signal. Now, to measure the PWM signal on the scope, what I'm going to do is I have soldered two wires from the PWM control IC. I can just attach my differential probe to these and measure it on the scope. Okay, so here's our setup. Um, I've got an ammeter, which is measuring how many amps flowing to our load. And the load is being controlled by this rheostat. And I'm going to start out at about 20 ohms. 
And um, here's our power supply, and I've got my differential probe measuring the PWM signal, and that's going to be shown on this scope. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the initial uh, duty cycle for about a 20 ohm load or maybe 6 tenths of an amp. And we should see 6 tenths of an amp on here. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the power to the power supply, 120 volts AC, and see what we get. So here you can see we've got the PWM duty cycle. It's about 17% duty cycle, and it's about almost 15 volts peak. And it's about 125 kilohertz, I think, seeing here. So um, that gives us a good idea about what it starts out at with about a 20 ohm load. So now I'm going to adjust this. I'm going to increase the load. And you can look here, starting out at 6 tenths of an amp, 7 tenths. And if you look at the scope, you can see that it's slowly increasing the PWM uh, duty cycle. And as I bring it down, it lowers the duty cycle. So now with um, our 6 tenths, we've got about a 17%. And if I crank it up to an amp, we are showing about a little over 20% duty cycle. So you can see it's increasing down here. It shows us the duty cycle is about 21%. So definitely the PWM duty cycle is increasing as we increase the load in order to maintain our 12 volts. So as you noticed in these um, power factor correction PWM controllers, uh, they spend a lot of time talking about power factor correction. We talked about what that is in, I think, video number four in the series. Um, so take a look at that if you're interested. Personally, um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on power factor correction. One way to look at it is that it's just a way for a power company to, in my view, uh, increase your electric rates for energy that you don't really use. I mean, it's, yet it uses their equipment. You, they need higher current ratings for their equipment. But does that really matter? And it also causes our power supplies to be more expensive because it's got a lot of stuff that works for uh, power factor correction. So I, I kind of not really interested. It's overly complex, and um, so I'm going to pass on that. Um, in the next videos, I'm not sure what, where we're going to go with this, uh, if at all. If I get some viewers, I might continue. Um, anyway, if you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, and most of all, let others know that we're here so we get some views. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.